Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. A while back, I received an email uh, from a friend of mine. I consider him a friend even though we've never met. His name is Terry and he lives in South Carolina. And he has from time to time been sending me things for my youngest grandson, the one that does the karate, uh, for those of you who have followed my videos. Uh, Terry at one time was into Ken Po, it's a form of karate. And uh, he sent me some videotapes uh, to give to my grandson, which he now has in his possession. And uh, he also sent uh, old radio shows, which and or just you know uh, old time stuff that uh, old time radio stuff uh, on CDs uh, that he had made copies of and things like that, and some originals uh, to give to my grandson. And I was very appreciative of that. Uh, Terry's a good feller all the way around. I mean, from top to bottom, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he is a member of the Antique Radio Forum, and he is a member of YouTube. And if you want to meet Terry, his uh, YouTube handle is specops56. S-P-E-C-O-P-S 56. Good fella. Well, he sent me an email, and he said, John, he said, uh, I I've got something I want you to have. He said, I want to send it to you. It's not going to cost you anything. He said, I'm going to drop it in the mail here in a few days, and I, I just want you to, to take it. So I, I sent an email back, of course, and said, no, wait a minute, Terry, you know, I don't want anything that might cost you uh, a bunch of money. A few bucks I don't mind. Uh, just make sure it's not too costly, or I will be, uh, you know, reimbursing you. Uh, dollar bills are a little bit difficult to come by today, so I don't want to have to cost anybody anything if I can help it. I try to give as much as I get. It, it, it's, sometimes it gets ahead of me, but I, I eventually catch up. This is what eventually arrived in the, in the, uh, in the mail a few days later. Uh, it is a, a Morse code reader, a CW reader. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, solid state on the inside. I'll open it up here in a few minutes and let you take a look at it close up. Uh, and the name of it is an Atronics code reader. And uh, Terry said all you had to do, as far as he knew, was to plug this into the speaker jack on the front of my HW101 transceiver and adjust the knobs a little bit and it will give me a code display, you know, uh, tune into a station that's doing CW and this thing will give me a readout as to what's being said. It interprets the dots and the dashes, the beeps and the beep, 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 beep. Gives me a, a letter by letter readout. But unfortunately, there's no manual with it, and I looked around the internet everywhere trying to find some information on this thing. An Atronics code reader. I came up empty. Uh, but it does light up, and it does display letters, but I don't think it's following the code that it's uh, receiving through the transceiver. The signal may not be strong enough. There may be something uh, I'm not doing that I don't know to do. Uh, I've adjusted everything I can on here. Uh, the left knob says level control, and... Uh, it's also the on-off switch, and the right side is the speed control. And I guess that's the speed in which it can interpret the uh, the Morse code, I, I assume. So, uh, first of all, I want to say again, thank you, Terry. This is an interesting device. I doubt that many of you have ever seen it. And uh, it's used, uh, I don't know, maybe it won't work with tube gear. Maybe it only works with uh, solid state. I don't know. Uh, anyone have an, an, has ever, ever seen one of these or anyone has a manual on this thing, I'd appreciate you contacting me uh, through the YouTube message uh, uh, center and let me know. Let me know uh, what you if you've ever used one. Do you know of anyone who has ever used one and how reliable it is? I mean, you know, in a couple of seconds, I'll have it plugged up to my uh, transceiver and let you see what's actually going on. And, uh, but right now, let's open up the lid and take a look at the inside. To open this thing up, you have to remove the four feet. Uh, there's four of these. Uh, they're just little uh, sheet metal screws down through some rubber feet. And once you get it off, then it slides out from the rear. Uh, the cover slides completely off. Let me go ahead and put it on the end here, make it a little bit easier to slide out, I think. Let me see. Let me get this baby out. Okay. All right. There we go. All right, this is what it looks like from the top. Just a whole bunch of 
integrated circuit chips here. IC chips, solid state all the way, little transformer, little speaker, and underneath you have more of the same to include, you know, a large, that's a 16 volt 2200 microfarad uh, filter capacitor there, and a couple of other smaller caps. Uh, they may be affecting the operation of it, I don't know. It is a pretty, I think it's pretty old, you know, it's uh, probably from the uh, 70s, maybe, 80s. So, yeah, I say that's pretty old to me. That's pretty darn young. Now, on the back of this thing, uh, there were three paper stickers that the ink had faded out on. And I was able to hold them in the sun and make out the impressions of the ink pen. And uh, this one says CWN. And then this is where your keyer, I imagine, hooks up. It says key. And this is keyer out. So... I don't know. I don't know if that would be from there to the transceiver uh, input. I assume so. And that's all I know about it. So, once again, uh, Terry, Spec Ops 56, provided this. Good feller. Nice guy. Uh, he has a couple of YouTube videos on there. Why don't you go diddy bop on over there and, and watch him. So let's take a look at this thing in action. I'm not exactly certain what's happening here. I'm getting some letters and things, but I this one, you adjust the speed knob over here and you get, I don't know, it just the same, seems to me to be the same letters and numbers over and over. The level, no matter what I do, it's not changing the display any. It just keeps putting out the same thing. I don't know. Anybody have any ideas? Uh, it would be nice. Anyway, until I hear something back from someone, or maybe figure it out on my own, uh, until next time, this is John.